Hi there, I'm Joey. I'm Jacob. And we are watching Star Trek for the first time. Last time on Star Trek, kids. And Kirk wanting to not be there. I neither did we. Anyway, yeah. um, today we're watching an episode <laughs> called, Is There in Truth No Beauty? Okay. Question, question mark. Yeah, I was gonna say that. It feels like a question. There is a question. at the question mark at the end. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's the name. That's the name. And, okay. I guess we're gonna get into post-episode thoughts in a second. Be sure to join us then. We're about to watch, Is There in Truth No Beauty? So season three, I'm aware, isn't the most well-regarded by Trek fans, but uh, this, this was really good. I enjoyed this a lot. Yeah, I like this episode. Yeah, this is really cool. Um, Some directorial decisions aside. So, yeah, here's the thing, though. It's directed by Rob, uh, Rob Sensensky, um, who's done a few episodes before. I think one episode that I know of, at least. He did the, this side of Paradise back in season one. Mm, okay. Um, I think he's done others. I'm not entirely sure. It was really just the one scene that bothered me, uh, which was the fight between Larry and Scotty. Right. It was. It, it was. was. It wasn't a good mix of insanity camera and normal camera. Yeah. Um, but most of the rest. I mean, there were a lot of other really, really cool shots that he went for. Um, he did a lot of like first-person looks from certain characters, um, and I thought that was really cool, actually. Um, yeah, I thought that was awesome. Um, I actually first off want to talk about um, uh, Dr. Jones as a character, who's uh, played by an actress named Diana Moldar, um, who we have seen in an episode before. She was in Return to Tomorrow. She was uh, Molhaw in that. Right. Um, but I hadn't realized at the time that I knew her voice. Um, she's Leslie Tompkins from Batman the Animated Series. And that's just cool. That is so cool. And also just one of those things that like, you just close your eyes and you can hear Les see Leslie Tompkins like right in front of you because mm -hmm. I just I don't know I love her voice she's awesome, um, but she yeah she plays a character called Doctor Jones here and um, and she's really fascinating I, I I said it the second the 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 twist happened in the episode I was like I want to I want to like rewatch the first thirty minutes again and see if I could pick up I'm sure they're there pick up on little cues that like she is she can't see I mean I called out at least one like right after you said it yeah well no no I mean more just like visual cues, like, like, um, just things that, like, oh, the way she, like, looks, or rather doesn't look at certain people, things like that, um, but you did call it, actually, yeah, because, um, she has that line after Spock looks at, uh, looks at the, uh, Medusa ambassador, um, she's like, uh, she's like, I want to know what he sees when he looks at you, um, because presumably she's looked, she's looked, at my proverbial air quotes, at him, mm -hmm. and, and just nothing, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I thought that was fascinating. I, I really loved that. Also, I, I, what I also thought was fascinating was there's this little throwaway line that doesn't really get touched upon in the rest of the episode, but Larry, whatever his last name is, um, comes onto the ship, and apparently, according to Scotty, he's like one of the designers of the Enterprise. I don't know why he's there. You missed that bit of dialogue. Yeah. I mean, why is the Medusa in there, though? He's an ambassador going to another planet. Mm, okay. And or his homeworld, one or the other. Yeah. Um, I don't know, usually, usually when there's like, <laughs> there's like a meeting between Starfleet and other aliens, I just kind of accept that it's happening. Like, <laughs> I'm not just yeah. like, okay, sure, important people are going to be there, I'm sure, I've, I guess. I've hit Some the, of them are probably going to die. I've hit the point in watching this show where I don't necessarily question why we have people on the ship. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but so, he, he was a cool little character for the, for the moments that he was there. Um, I loved the dinner scene between him... Jones and, and some of the some of the Enterprise crew. Um, first off, Scotty in a fucking kilt, which yeah. is always a which is just a pleasure to see. Um, and also the rest of uh, it was Kirk, Spock, and McCoy there that um, that were back in that um, that like I guess like I'm, I'm guessing they're like it's like ambassador uniforms. It's like I call it their formal wear because they were wearing those back in Journey to Babel. Yeah. Um, and uh, and that was like an ambas ambassador like meeting there. Um, but yeah, so they were wearing those, um, and it, it's it's where like a lot of like the the idea behind the title comes from. Still a really pointlessly long title and kind of stupid, but yeah, I get what it's going for. Um, but also, like, <laughs> I love how like how the one line is just hand waved away when um, uh, when Jones is like, "Oh my god, somebody in this room is thinking of murder," and everyone's like, "Oh my god, wow." And then oh, she's right, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm full, let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's go. It's like, it's like okay. Um, and it could only really be Larry if she's not talking about herself. Um, and I wonder if in that scene you could see some cue about her blindness that McCoy picked up on, because he's pretty uh, 
keen on helping her to back to her back to her uh, uh, room. Yeah. yeah exactly. I wonder if he noticed in that room somewhere. Maybe? Because he is the character that calls it out later when, when they do the twist in the episode. Um, Maybe there's something there. Maybe. Yeah, I, I do wonder like how long he knew, which is, which is just interesting. Um, but Larry turns out to be the one that was thinking of murder, and it seems like they're gonna like convict him for thinking about murder, which I guess you could do, but that's some minority report shit there. <laughs> like, <Right. laughs> I don't know, man. Um, I mean, also, he has some like crazy line of dialogue, like, that her love is murder. Yeah, yeah. Um, which also doesn't really get followed up on. <laughs> that's also, of course, after he's gone insane from looking at the master. Yeah, yeah. Um... Also, he's not, like, shot or anything. How does he die? <laughs> McCoy put it, he no longer wanted to live. <laughs> Fucking Padme over here. Right. <laughs> he's, he's lost he's... the will to live. He's... <laughs> That's great. Um, oh my god, I love that. That but... is, of course, after he's taken them through the galaxy barrier. Yeah. Again. Yeah, which has happened a couple of times. And, but this time they get stuck there in, 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 the, in the barrier. And, uh, and, and so they need to get piloted out of there by the ambassador, I guess. Um, so Spock needs to link with the, uh, link with the Medusa ambassador, who's named Collis? Collis, yeah. Um, and so they, they make this little, like, thing. It's, it's just a little cubicle wall for Spock and, uh, and Collis to, to, to link in. Um, so no one can see, like, yeah. the light or whatever. Yeah. But Leonard Nimoy delivers this really lovely little performance for, like, the five minutes he gets to play Collis. Um, yeah, because he still gets to be... Sp it's, normally, we see this performance when he's evil. Yeah. This, yeah. it's just nice to see because it's really happy. Yeah, yeah. He sees, like, oh my god, my friends, I've never actually been able to communicate with any of you. Um, I love the little thing that he says about Ahura. Um, I forget what her name means. Her, um, and what, Freedom? I forget what it was. I don't know. I want to say um, I want to say he says that her name means freedom. I love that. And he he talks to like you know Kirk and and, and McCoy and, and Jones as like friends because he's never been able to do that. And he pilots the ship out of the barrier and he gets back and Kirk is like it's time to you know let go now and he's like he, it, it's this genuine moment of sadness. He's like so soon, but you're right because uh, I think even Collis knows that. This is a typical Star Trek plot. He, he, <laughs> if he stayed in Spock's body for too long, he probably would have gotten a little too used to it. There's also this lovely little moment where he gets to ponder on humanity. Just nice. Right. Um, he goes back, though. At first, I thought it might have been a maybe Collis is evil kind of thing. Maybe he purposefully made Spock forget the visor. But Spock, I guess, just forgot the visor? Just right, just casually? Right. I think it's because it's such a normal feeling action at that point. Yeah. Where they're like, all right, time to go back in your little box, Ambassador. Mm -hmm. But uh, but Spock goes insane. We do this little plot where uh, where he's looked after by um, by Doctor Jones, and she has to link let, uh, link with him, and she gets to see what he saw when he looked at Callus, and it's a nice little moment, and it makes for a really nice last scene where Kirk gives her this rose, and um, and she talks to Spock, and we get to live long and prosper again. It's just it's great. I like mm -hmm. it. It's very nice. Um, and that was, is there in truth no beauty? I hate saying that. I feel like a dumbass when I say that. <laughs> I just, I, it's not a, like, I just do. <laughs> That's it. Um, I mean, it, it, it talks about a point that we've said before, but it's not, we're not getting there. Yeah. Anyway, um, I guess that about does it. Uh, be sure to join us next week when we continue Star Trek, the original series. Until then, this has been Joey Morgan. I'm Jacob. Goodbye.